Hey everybody, Mark Stiles down here at Studio B at 892 with one of our team lead attorneys, Ben Cody. Ben, thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me, Mark. So Ben is uh, head of our commercial real estate and estate planning department, but we wanted to borrow him for a residential real estate and potentially commercial real estate question because it's a little bit high level. Uh, I wanted to ask some of the files that we're getting lately have betterments associated with them. What is a betterment? Yeah, that's a great question, Mark, and it comes up all the time in real estate. So you can really think of a betterment as bettering the property. So the most common example would be uh, the town comes in and they want to add water to a particular street. And so rather than billing the entire town in general, they say, let's bill the people that actually get the betterment. Their properties are bettered. And so a lien will be applied to each house on that street that actually is tied into the water. So they don't have to pay right then and there out of pocket. No, well, they can, but in most cases, uh, well, the town is realistic enough to know that people don't have a pile of money just sitting there ready to pay for this betterment that comes out of the blue. And so the town, uh, just like a mortgage loan, will put a, a lien on the property, and then the homeowner is allowed to pay that over time. And they just put that on the tax bill? Yep, so it becomes part of the tax bill, and so it's broken into quarterly payments or semi-annual, depending on what town it is. Okay, so now the question is, seller who has a betterment associated with their property decides to sell the property, who's responsible to pay it? Well, that's a great question. And it's really up to the parties to decide that. So uh, the in the case of a cash transaction, the buyer as part of the, the negotiation can say, I'm going to assume the betterment, take over those payments. Uh, or they could say, I'm going to pay it off at closing uh, if they don't want to pay uh, the modest interest that accrues with it. Um, but in the case of a finance transaction, so if the buyer is getting a loan, you have to worry about whether that lender will allow them to assume the betterment because it can throw off the ratios a little bit. If you're paying an extra $100, $200 per quarter, uh, especially in uh, a case where the payments are already a little tight, uh, that could throw things off. And the town sometimes doesn't even allow uh, the assumption. So uh, really the best course of action is to go in eyes wide open and know exactly what the betterment is, what the total is, but also what the quarterly payment would be. So if someone's in a situation where they're not sure uh, if the seller has a betterment on the property and they're going to make an offer on the property, what would you recommend? So there's two things you can do. You can either go down to the uh, tax assessor's office or collector uh, and see if there's a betterment. But in most cases, you don't have the time to do that. So really the best way to go is to add some form language into your offer that says, any and all betterments are to be paid by seller at the time of closing. And then if there is no betterment, great, doesn't matter. And if there is, you've protected yourself. You're not assuming something you didn't know about. So we're getting out in front of it and deciding whether or not there's a renegotiation that's going to happen if the seller might not have disclosed this properly. Absolutely, and it works the other way too. So if you're a seller and you know you have a betterment, but you don't want to pay it or it's new, and so you say, really, they're getting the betterment, they're, they're getting the benefit of this betterment, you could actually put into your MLS listing buyer to assume betterment or buyer uh, uh, on notice that this betterment exists with a figure. And then that way, um, if a buyer makes an offer and doesn't say anything about the betterment, you counter offer and say buyer to assume the betterment with an approximate balance of X dollars. Got it. Okay. So basically, as long as it's clear uh, to both the buyer and the seller whose responsibility it is, money's fungible, we just put it into the negotiation strategy. Right. And so you can really think of it a lot like a repair. So we don't require that a house is in perfect condition. We just have to make sure that the buyer has an opportunity to uncover it. So we don't want people to have these hidden defects. And the same thing applies with a betterment. If the buyer is willing to assume it or the, the, the seller is willing to pay it, it's kind of whatever the parties want to, to agree in terms of that deal. Got it. Hey, Ben, that was very helpful. Hopefully that was helpful for our viewers. If you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 781-319-1900 or visit our website at styles-law.com. And there's plenty of blog articles uh, for you, the viewers, as well. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Mark.